Welcome to this lesson for CPI 111. And in this lesson, we're going to create the game from Chapter 6 in the course textbook. Uh, you'll need to completely create this game as an assignment for class. So you'll want to pay careful attention uh, to this lesson and or read very carefully through Chapter 6 to make sure that you understand how to put together that game and can build it uh, from the ground up, almost. To help you out and save some time, I've uploaded a starter version of the game file for the Chapter 6 game that includes all of the sprites that you'll need for the game, lots and lots of sprites, all the sounds you'll need for the game, the background you'll need, and then uh, some of the objects. I've already set up objects for the start room, which is... Uh, just to load the game and uh, show help scores and so on and also for the end room that just shows a congratulations message before we get in and start uh, building the key objects to make this game interactive let me briefly show you what it's going to look like when you're all done so you come in and you can move uh, your little character around and bounce a starfish up and try to hit objects up at the top of the screen each level becomes more challenging as you go along with more things to hit. Okay, so that's where we're going to add up. End up. Uh, this game includes pretty much everything you've already learned about how to use Game Maker, uh, and combines them all into a simple, common form of a game that's uh, quite fun to play. So let's go ahead and get in and start creating. We need to start off by creating a wall object. So I'll call it obj underscore wall and choose my wall sprite. And uh, we're going to enable the solid option. Now we're going to create an object called catch. This is our player object, the one that's controlled by the human player and that allows uh, uh, the human player to move the catch object left and right and to uh, uh, aim the starfish up at the stuff at the top of the screen. So let's uh, create that now. obj underscore catch using the catch sprite and we'll add a left keyboard event since we're going to be moving left and right. We'll start by doing the left one and we're going to add a check action and what we're going to look for is the wall and we want to know whether there is a wall to the left of the catch object so we're going to check minus 10 uh, so left 10 spots on the horizontal and then Y will just leave 0 and of course we want to check relative so we're looking to see whether or not there is uh, an object which is the wall object uh, 10 pixels to the left of our current spot and in fact the way we're going to set it up is we're going to check to make sure that there is not a wall object to the left of us so make sure you select the not option so if we check and we find that there is not a wall to the left of us, then we'll go ahead and allow our catch object to move to the left. So I'll do a jump to position action, and then I'll put in those exact same numbers, so minus 10. So if there's no wall to the left of us, 10 spaces, we'll move 10 spaces to the left relative, of course. And we're going to do the same thing to the right, checking to see if there is a wall 10 pixels to the right of us, or rather if there is not, and if there isn't one then we'll jump 10 pixels relative to our current position to the right. Okay, that's all that that object needs to do. It just needs to 
uh, move left and right unless there is a wall. So we're going to create uh, the object that is our little starfish, and it's called the pop object in the chapter uh, chapter six in our book. So we'll call it obj underscore pop. Give it the uh, little starfish sprite. Let's set its depth to 10 so that it will appear behind other objects in the game. This is going to help it look better as we begin to build in other pieces inside our game. For our pop object, we're going to have a create event, and we're going to include a, a, a move free action. And we're going to have it move free uh, at a speed of 12. And we want our pop uh, object to start off by moving upward. But we don't always want it to go directly upward. So we're going to, for the direction, we're going to say random. And we'll restrict the degrees that it can go. So it'll choose some random number between 0 and 59, and then we'll add 60 to that, which is going to make it be going up, but not straight up all the time. And if you look in your uh, book, you'll see exactly what this uh, looks like. If you want a reminder of the interesting way that Game Maker sets its uh, degrees when it's doing direction, um, it will help you to remember why it is we're choosing something uh, basically between 60 and 120 as our direction to have our uh, starfish move. We're also going to include some gravity so that it doesn't just keep moving toward the top of the screen forever. Uh, it will begin to uh, slow down as it's going up in the air and then turn around and start uh, falling back toward the bottom of the screen. So we're going to set the direction to 270, which is down, and then we'll set the strength of the gravity to 0.2. Now we're going to add a collision event. We're going to set it so we know what happens when it collides with the wall. So we're doing a wall collision uh, event. And our action is going to be a bounce action. And we're going to set the precise to precisely, so it uh, takes into account the exact appearance of the colliding sprites when it calculates the collision. Okay, and we're setting it against solid objects, and the only solid objects we're going to have uh, for now are the walls. Next, we need to set up a collision between our pop object, our little starfish, and our catch object. And... Uh, Rather than just do a simple bounce, we're going to do something a little bit more uh, sophisticated so that we can allow the player to aim their bounces depending on where um, pop collides with catch. In the chapter in the book, it gives a, a, a good detailed description of exactly what we're going to do. Uh, for the sake of saving some time, I'm just going to quickly show you how to do it here. So I'm going to add another collision event. This is going to be our collision uh, with the catch object. And we're going to have another move free action. But for the direction this time, we're going to put in 90 plus the x coordinate of our catch object minus uh, the x-coordinate of the pop object. And then for our speed, we're going to take whatever the current speed is of the pop object, and then we're going to add 0.3 to that current speed. and say OK. Finally, we're going to restart the room uh, when our pop object uh, falls down off the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to add a uh, an other event, and then I'm going to choose outside room as the event, and then we'll do a restart the room action.
Now let's come down and let's uh, create a room to test this out. So I want you to go to your room completed room and right click on it and choose insert room. And we'll call this room room test. And let's grab our background image for the room. Our wall sprites are 20 by 20, so I'm going to set the snap X and Y to 20 by 20, and uh, turn this back on so you can see. Then I'll switch over to the Objects uh, tab, and I'm going to select uh, the wall object. And I'm going to go ahead and place the wall object right around the uh, edges of the room, except for the bottom, because we want to, uh, our uh, pop object to be able to fall down through the bottom. All right. Remember, if you hold down the Shift key and then hold down your left mouse button, you can just draw the objects out onto the room. And I'm going to grab my catch object, and I'll place him down near the middle at the bottom of the screen. And I'll grab my pop object, and I'll stick him somewhere here above the catch object. Save everything I've got so far, and hit play, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, you can see our pop object bounces up, gravity takes hold. If he hits a wall, then he bounces off, and depending on where he lands on my catch object, he bounces back up at an angle. Okay, coming back into Game Maker, let's begin to add uh, some other objects in the game for our pop object to bounce into so the player can get some points. First, we're going to create an object called Big Leg, which is going to be a big uh, uh, octopus character. So go up to your Create Object. And uh, I'm going to name it Object Big Leg and select our Big Leg sprite. And I'll create a collision event. And it's going to be uh, an event that takes place when the pop object collides with the Big Leg object. And what do we want to have happen? We want to destroy the instance of the Big Leg object. And we want to give our player some points as well. So I'm setting mine to 200 points for knocking off one of the big leg objects, making sure to select relative. It's time now to create a controller object. Every level of the game, every room, basically, is going to have a controller object. And in this game, it's going to be used to um, count the number of big leg instances that are in that room. In order to complete a room, the player needs to um, hit any and all big leg objects that are in that given room. So we need to keep track of how many have been collided with. So let's create that object now. remembering that there is no sprite associated with this controller object, so we're going to instead add an event, which is going to be a step event, a step step event. We're going to include an instance count, because we need to count how many of our big leg objects instances are still out in the room. So we'll select the big leg object. And I want to check if the number of them is equal to zero. If so, then we're going to perform some actions. Since we're going to do more than one action, we'll put in a start and end block. First thing we're going to do is have a sleep action to let the player have a moment to recognize that uh, they have finished off a room. And if they finished off the room, then we're going to send them to the next room. And 
and we'll close out our block. Now we'll add some instances of these objects to a couple of test rooms. We'll make two rooms by copying our first room. It'll save us a bit of time. So come down to your test room. Then inside your test room you need to place one copy of the controller object. Doesn't matter where, because the uh, player is not going to see it. In addition to your controller object, let's put in a couple of our big legs. So I'll stick one in the... Oops, I'm going to move that guy. Put him up over here on the right. Put one up over here on the left. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this test room by right-clicking on it and choosing Duplicate. Call room Test 2. I'm going to move our big leg objects elsewhere. And I'm going to make uh, them a little hard to get to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my wall object and I'm going to give them a little home. So I'll put a little space here and a little platform for them to sit on. Here like this. And then we'll be able to stick them down in there. And we'll have another one down here Grab my big leg object, I'll stick one up here, one up here, and one right here. So now they're awfully hard to get to. Save all this, and let's take a look. Alright, now I can hit these guys. And... Okay, so that second room's pretty hard, and now we can uh, continue on.